Kennedy. No, you're wrong. I'm not Tommy Meehan. Funny how everybody takes me for Tommy Meehan. No, Tommy hasn't got that certain, uh, you know, that I have. But uh, it's a funny thing. For a man that's good looking as I am, I get the homeliest girl. I just canceled the girl of mine, yes. Homely? Oh, you've heard about people's faces being wrinkled? Hus was a court eater. And, and she had a very, very nice family. Of course, they had a lot of hard luck. Yes, her, her poor father, uh, he died of throat trouble. They hung him. And her brother, lovely chap, but he's gone, poor fella. With good behavior, he ought to be out in uh, 1927 or 8. You know, he used to work in a bank. But no matter how much the boss likes you, you can't work in a bank and bring home samples. Oh, no. And she was a nice girl. I didn't mind her being homely, but she was so dumb, terribly dumb. Well, she was so dumb, they had to burn down the schoolhouse to get her out of the second grade. Can't beat that. Well, enough about her. I think I'll recite. That's it. I feel poetical. There was a man who loved the bees. He was their earnest friend. He used to sit upon their hives, but they stung him in the end. <laughs> Thank you. I knew you'd like it. Now I think I'll sing. It's the safest thing for me to do. Mr. Olson, would you play something for Eddie? Do that, will you? I may look simple, but I want you to... I'm full of knowledge. I'm right at home with brainy men, and then my wisdom I show. But when there's clever girls around, I get up and go. Those educated babies are a bore. I'm going to say what I've said many times before. Oh, the dumber they come, the better I like them. Cause the dumb ones know how to make love. Oh, Weisenheimer has you need for folks when you call. The brainless baby always keeps you down in the hall. Oh, the dumbbells I've met have won beauty prizes. They look like angels sent from above. A clever girl will want to know if you mean to wed. The dumb ones never think of looking that far ahead. That's why the dumber they come, the better I like them. Cause the dumb ones know how to make love. Oh, the dumber they come, the better I like them. Cause the dumb ones know how to make love. The smart girls speak Greek and other languages, too. But the dumb girl's only language is who's poochy poochy as you. All the saps that I bet have won beauty prizes. They look like angels sent from above. You start in squeezing clever girls, you're soon on the shelf. But when you're with dumb doors, you can just be yourself. All the dumber they come, the better I like them. But the dumb ones the how to make love. I deserve it. <clears throat> I bet you thought I was all through. No such luck. I must finish this. Oh, before I forget, uh, yesterday I went down to the Pennsylvania Railroad Station to wait for a train from Philadelphia. And standing alongside of me, uh, right in the little place where you make the trains for Philadelphia, was a Jewish man and a little boy. And it seems that this boy must have aggravated his father because his father kept hitting him. He kept saying to him, I could give it to you for the second time. Finally, a man passed and said, cut it out, mister. Don't you hit that boy again or I'll make trouble for you. Hear that? I'll make trouble for you. This fellow turned around and said, you're going to make trouble for me. Last week, my wife ran away with the janitor. Yesterday, I failed in business. My baby's got measles and he swallowed the tickets to Philadelphia and you're going to make trouble for me? You seem to like this story so well, I think I'll tell you another story of a gentleman of Hebraic faith. Last uh, year, uh, the week before Christmas, you remember we had the week before Christmas last year, I was going on the train from Chicago to San Francisco on the Overland Limited. That's an express train that goes directly from Chicago to San Francisco. And the first day out, seated alongside of me, was this little fellow kept moaning to himself like this. Oh, and the next day out, he repeated the same thing. He says, oh, and when he did it the third day, I went over to him. I said, Mister, please excuse me for butting in, but I want to help you. Tell me why. Why do you keep moaning like that? He says, oh, 
It's already the third day I'm on the wrong train. Um, well, I think I'll sing again now. It won't hurt. Mr. Olsen, again, won't you play a little something, Freddy? <laughs> Georgie Porgy is a guy who is very bashful and so shy. The ladies prize him, they idolize him. You can find him most anywhere in the great big cozy Morris chair. I'd be looking at the ceiling while some girlie is appealing. Oh, gee, Georgie, whenever I'm with you. Oh, gee, Georgie, I don't know what to do. You never tease or hug or squeeze like Johnny or Joe. You look at me and then, oh, gee, I get slow. I don't know. Oh, gee, Georgie, what can it be? When you're around, I get so excited. You're not handsome like a statue, but each time that I look at you, oh, gee, Georgie, oh, gee. Oh, gee, Georgie, whenever I'm with you, oh, gee, Georgie, I don't know what to do. You talk to me of poetry and music and art, but you're not here for that, my dear. I wish you'd start. Have a heart, oh, gee, Georgie, what can it be? When you're around, I get so excited. My head should be just where your chest is. Kiss me, hot lips, I'm as best as... Oh, gee, Georgie, oh, gee. 